Hello and welcome to another game development tutorial. We're using Unity and uh, today we're going to be learning about how you can declare variables and how you can work with the functions, the user-defined functions. So it's more of a programming activity, but once you learn this basic concept, you'll be able to declare your variables. Then you'll learn how to declare variables using C-sharp and how to assign values to them and how you can call functions, user-defined functions, pass them parameters and a lot of those details is what we're going to be discussing today. So to get started, we're going to be creating a game object, but this time an empty game object. So empty game objects are, are created for several reasons. One could be for testing purpose, like what we're going to be doing. We're going to be testing some code on it. Second reason, uh, an empty object can be created when we create prefabs. So you basically create an object by putting several other objects together in that one object. So it is an empty object by itself, but it holds other objects. So when I teach you the prefab, I'll actually teach you how you can use it in that context. But for now, I'm going to just click on empty object. It's a game object. You can go under inspector. You can call it whatever you like. And I can call it programming object. And then, once you're done with naming it, you can just click Add Component, and you can go under New Script, and then you can give your script a name. I'm going to call this one Learning Programming 1, and I'm going to just click Create an Ad. So I get a script in the assets, which I can double-click, and I'm going to open Visual Studio for me to work with. Now here in this environment, you notice that you have a start method and an update method that's given to you. Start method only runs once at the start of the game. And besides start, we also have an awake method, which actually uh, is called automatically before you start the game. So anything that you want to be preloaded in your game, you should put it in the awake. Anything that you want to only load at the start of the game, you should put it in the start. And anything that you want to run per frame, you should put it in the update. Now, there are different kinds of updates we're going to be learning about. Uh, fixed update and the update, so I'm going to deal with that in another tutorial. But for now, we'll just concentrate on local and global variables. So if you declare a variable outside of all the methods, like here, like I'm declaring integer, my integer equals to 5. Now, that is your global variable. That means this variable will be accessible from any method. Any, any variable that you declare inside any given method is only available within that method. So for example, if I go under start and I declare a variable over here, I, it will only going to be accessible inside start. So if I say integer my int2 equals to 10. Now here inside the start, I can easily call debug.log and I can display my int, and as you can see, it doesn't give me an error. It completely understands my int, as well it also understands my int too. Now, let's run this. So let me switch over to Unity environment, and let me go to the game in the run mode, and let me switch over to console. And as you can see in the start, I get two sets of outputs, 5 and 10. 5 because that is the output coming from my int and 10 because that's the output coming from my int too. So now let me switch back to the Visual Studio environment and now let me create a user defined function. When you create a user defined function, if it's a non value returning, you declare it with the word void. And if it's a value returning, you declare it with whatever kind of value it's going to be returning. So if I want uh, this particular method to only display a variable's value, I'll just call it void display. And I'm going to write debug.log in display. I'm just adding that so that you know that this message is actually coming from display. And if I say my int, and you will notice it doesn't complain, it understands my int. But if I say uh, display my int2, it gives me an error because it doesn't understand who my int2 is because my int2 was declared locally inside start so it's not available to display method that's why it will not understand but since my int was declared outside of all the methods it is global it's available to everybody so if I decide to change the value of my int in any one of the methods it's going to change it for everybody 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a call to display because other than start, all user-defined methods cannot be called automatically until you make a call. So we're going to call display right from here, right from the start. So I want to call display. So, so start, we're going to display the values 5, 10, and then we're going to make a call to display, which will display an output in display, and we're going to display 5 again. So let's first go switch over back to Unity, and now let me pause this, or stop it, and then run it again. And now you should be able to see the output 5, 10, and in display 5. Now, just so that you can see how global variables work, I would like to now change my end to a value of 101. And after the call to display in the start method, I would like to now tap into uh, the value of my end. And it should not be 5 anymore. It should be changed to 101 because it's a global variable. And since this display call, uh, since display call is happening before I'm calling debug.log and displaying the value of my end, therefore display will change my end from 5 to 101, so the value should be 101. So let me put over here a message for you to be able to see that new value, and then I'll concatenate it with my end. So now let me switch over, and let me start again, and just so that you can see the output in the console environment, and you will notice that it says 510, in display it's 5, and notice the new value is 101. So the value that was changed by display is quite reflective. So you have to be a little bit careful with the global variables. In the game, you will well, you want to display the global variable, something that will be shared across the board. For example, if you're building an online game, and you want to keep the count of the number of people who are currently playing an online game, you want to keep the count the same for everybody. So you want to declare it global. So if a user leaves the game and you subtract the count, everybody should be able to see that the count is going down. Similarly, if anybody joins the game, the so count should go up and it should go up for everybody. So that kind of stuff can be done with the help of global variables. So in this short tutorial, I just wanted to show you what a local variable is, what a global variable is, how they're used, and how uh, the built-in methods in any of the game environment can call user-defined methods and how user-defined methods are actually called. So you need to make a call to a user-defined method by simply stating its name, followed by a parentheses, and if it doesn't receive any value, the parentheses will be blanks. So in the next tutorial, I'll actually write a, a method or a function or a sub-procedure, whatever you want to call it, which will be able to receive a value from the caller and will be able to then process that value. Have a good time. Have a, have a great day. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. 